So let us understand or simplify the reading of tympanogram. A tympanogram is nothing but just the measuring the compliance of the middle ear. When you see a tympanogram graph, you will see a y-axis and a x-axis. The y-axis measures the compliance which is measured in cc or ml. The x-axis measures the pressure at which the compliance is taken. This will be in deca, the units for this will be decapascals. So pascals for pressure and cc for the compliance. This is how we understand. Now there are different kinds of curves that we get. The curves are generally something like this. It can be a small curve, it can be a large curve. So when we read it, we see the height of the curve. The height of the curve should be, if the height of the curve is between 0 0.5 to 1.5. So if the height of the curve is between 0 0.5 to 1.5, this is a normal tympanogram or we also call it as a A tympanogram. And how do we read it? It is the normal compliance at zero pressure. If the height of the curve is more than 1.5, then we call it as a A, B kind of curve. It means the compliance is higher. And how do we read it? At zero pressure, high compliance is present. And third is the height of the curve is small. We call it as a A, S kind of curve where the compliance is less at a normal pressure. So normal pressure, normal volume is a normal compliance is A curve. At zero pressure, if the compliance is less, it is AS kind of curve and at zero pressure, the compliance more, it is AD kind of curve. We know AD kind of curve is seen in ossicular discontinuity, AS kind of curve is seen in otosclerosis and this is a normal compliance or A kind of curve. Kinds of curve, one is a B kind of curve. A B kind of curve we all know is a flat curve. What does a fat, flat curve mean? Flat curve mean the compliance of the middle ear is constant at whatever pressure is given. So at negative pressure, at zero pressure, at high pressure, the compliance of the middle ear is constant. This is a B kind of curve. So we read, we read it as the flat curve or normal compliance or at all the pressures. It is seen in case of otitis media with effusion. And the third kind of curve that we have is a C kind of curve. If you see the C kind of curve, it is the normal compliance, but at a negative pressure. So when we get, it is same like A, but it is on the negative pressure side. So when you see a normal compliance at a negative pressure, we call it a C kind of curve, which is seen in conditions of eustachian tube disease and one or two more conditions. This C curve is also divided into C1, C2 and C3 dividing on how much negative the curve comes. If it comes as minus 100, it is C1. If it is minus 200, minus 200, C2 and at minus 300, it is C3. So C1, C2, C3 types of different are also types of C curves. The tympanogram gives us idea about the compliance of the middle ear. It also gives us idea about the external canal volume because it is important that the volume should be known when we are doing the tympanometry. In case of a perforated ear, the volume of the middle ear will be more. In case of a wax, polyp, mass, the volume of the middle ear will be less. So if we have an external auditory canal and if there is a mass here, the volume will become less and if there is a perforation, the volume will become more. So how does the tympanogram or where does the tympanogram reflect the volume? So you should always see in a tympanogram curve at the level of 200, at plus 200, you will find a bar which is present. At the level of 200, I repeat, at the level of plus 200, you will find a bar which is present which shows us the external canal volume. If the volume is again between 0.5 to 1.5, it is normal volume. If the volume is more, the patient might be having a perforation. If the volume is less, the patient might be having a narrow auditory canal or there might be a polyp or wax in the EAC. 
which is asked in many MCQs and if you are answering very good, you may be asked a question, what is the, what is the frequency of the probe which is used? So it is 226 hertz probe is generally used for when we are doing an impedance audiometry. However, the hertz, however, when we are doing it in case of children, we use a thousand or a higher hertz probe. This uh, was information of how to answer a question on a tympanogram when you are asked in the viva. There is some theory also behind this, which we'll be covering in some other video. But this is a short video to understand how to answer a tympanogram graph in a viva. I hope this clarifies few doubts. Any doubts you can have, you can put in the comment section. We'll be glad to answer. Thank you so much.